that's right. Well, fine. Um, look, I'm sorry, Cheryl, but uh, me and Gareth have been having a bit of a talk, and uh, we come to talk to you about the uh, arrangement. Yeah, we're not happy about it. You're going to have to choose. Choose? Yeah, you're going to have to choose uh, which one of us you want as your boyfriend. I'm sorry, but uh, we just can't carry on like this. Seeing it on alternate nights. No, it's no good, Cheryl. You've got to make your mind up. It's either me or me. So, uh, that's why we're here. You're right, I suppose, but it's tricky. I mean, there's you, Norman. You're kind and thoughtful and ever so tidy. You come round here and you clean my house for me. You do my washing and my cooking and my ironing. Such a pity you're so useless in bed, really. <laughs> <laughs> and that's you, Gareth. Now you're a bit of a slob round the house. You're messy. You wouldn't dream of washing up a dirty cup or taking a pot out to the kitchen. But, um, you do make up for it in other ways. I'll try. Maybe I could do, you know, a bit of washing up now and then. I could get a book from the library. Thanks, boys. But I've made my choice. You see, I've replaced you, Norman, with a new vacuum cleaner and a dishwasher <laughs> and someone who comes to do all my ironing. And you, Gareth, well, I've made other arrangements there, too. in popularity of the Australian soap opera on British TV has been, to say the least, phenomenal. How well acquainted we all are with the day-to-day -day life and dramas of ordinary families in suburban Australia. But who are the people responsible for these dramas? Who are the brains behind the scenes? To find out, today I've come to Melbourne, Australia, to interview two such brains, the co-writers of these incredible soap operas, Bruce and Sarah Lean Colibus. Good morning. Now, first of all, Bruce, how did you get the idea for the program? <laughs> I see. Mm -hmm. I suppose what fascinates most viewers is the way that you intricately weave the subplot without any way straying from the main theme. Does this require a lot of discipline on your part? <laughs> And finally, I'd like to say congratulations to both of you on your success, and on behalf of everybody in Britain, may it long continue. Thank you. Just when you thought it was safe to go into the nursery, death. Destruction. Disaster. Your milk will curdle when you see Baby Arnold Schwarzenegger in The Parambulator. Hello, Billy. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Hello, everyone. I wonder if you can guess what Billy and I have been doing since we saw you last time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We've been going through puberty. <laughs> you, know what, you know what puberty means? No, it's not that. It means there's something changing in my genes. <laughs> we know a song about that, don't we? <laughs> Ging gang, gooly 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 gooly. <laughs> puberty means. You can grow lots of crinkly little hairs in funny places. <laughs> and that means Bruce Forsyth had a puberty on his head. <laughs> puberty arrives very, very quickly. That's right. I went to sleep last night and had a puberty, and when I woke up this morning, I had a moustache. <laughs> that means Billy can become a ladies' javelin champion, doesn't it? <laughs> Now, 
We know a song about that, don't we? <laughs> With a cockle and muscles alive, alive, alive. <laughs> I've got to go now. I've got to take my puberty for a walk in the park. And I've got to take my puberty to the hairdressers for a haircut. <laughs> Blow dry? I might do. <clears throat> well, I rather like it, actually. <laughs> Some of you have been making a cup of tea, and it wasn't even a commercial break. If you do that again, Ronnie is going to come round your house and rip your nose off your face and push it so far down your throat, you'll be able to smell your own feet. <laughs> 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 Shakespeare, Dickens, T.S. Eliot, Kipling, Thackeray, George Bernard Shaw. Undoubtedly an impressive display of English literature. And yet, the disappointing thing for me, none of them have got any tits in them. <laughs> what are you reading, mate? Well, it's, um, Geoffrey Archer. Oh, yeah. What are you reading? History of railway timetables. <laughs> Want to swap? No How do you spell inadequate? I N A D E Q U A T E. Is love making hyphenated? <laughs> Don't know. Yeah, it is. It's hyphenated. <laughs> Ends in minuscule. <laughs> what are you writing about? Well, I'm just writing what we did last night in my diary. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, one N in a minuscule. Why don't you just put tiny? Tiny? Oh, yeah, that's a better word for describing it. That's a word for describing what? tell you that it's private isn't it yeah well i'm your boyfriend aren't i how do you spell premature <laughs> i don't know it's p r e m a t u r e i'm going for a swim you coming sharon yeah Inadequate. Love making. Minuscule. <laughs> Premature. Oh dear, dear, dear. <laughs> Wonder what she's writing about, Norm. Hey. Eh? <clears throat> the facilities at the hotel are totally inadequate. <laughs> the beds had no blankets, so we didn't exactly love making them. Oh. We called the manager, who was only five foot two. In fact, he was tiny. And he was balding prematurely. Huh. Yeah. Finally, we went to bed and had another useless shag. God, he's pathetic. <laughs> When you're making a television programme, actually, oh. there are lots of little accidents that occur, aren't there, Gary? Yeah, yeah, those, those sort of unforeseen tragedies that rear their ugly heads from time to time. That's right. In, in showbiz, we call them outtakes. You probably wouldn't know that. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, honestly, some, some real spontaneous ones happened in our show, didn't they? <laughs> Absolutely. So, so why don't you just join us now and let's watch a few together. Uh, action. Who put the elephant in the briefcase? <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do what? Don't do that. Don't do what? Don't dangle a dart from the ceiling. <laughs> Look at me. I'm as helpless as a kitten up a tree. Never knowing my right hand from my left, my hat from my glove, 
I'm just missing. <laughs> <laughs> Many people ask me why I moved out to the country. Well, it's not purely because of the pressures of living in a city. <laughs> Somebody take your dog up on <laughs> The final facts. Whose bright idea was this anyway? What is it? I'll tell you what it is. It's a bit of old leather with a few metal rings on the inside and hundreds of pieces of useless paper, all with little holes printed down the side so they can fit over the metal rings. And this one costs you 50 pounds. I mean, 50 pounds. What was wrong with that? Why do you drink then? <laughs> Me? Yeah. I drink it come out of my shell. You know what it's like when you're in your shell? You want to come out of it. So you have a couple of beers, like? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then so you're out of your shell, right? And, and there it is, like, beside you. <laughs> and you're out of it. So you have another couple of beers then, do you? What? Yeah, yeah. You have another couple of beers and then, um... Well, then you sort of get out of your tree. Oh, you're out of your tree? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, sort of, there you were, right? Uh, in your tree, like. But out of your shell? <laughs> yeah, out of yeah. your shell, but, but still in your tree. Right. And you have another couple of beers and... Bang. Bang. You're out of your tree and you're out of your shell as well, yeah. yeah that's right. right. Yeah. And you stand there, looking up at your tree, saying... How the hell did I get down here? <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. No, no, it's not funny. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, once you're out of your tree, you have, like, another couple of beers and... <laughs> we all know what can happen then. Yeah. What? <laughs> you go off your trolley. Right. <laughs> trolley, yeah, right. And once you're off your trolley, well, you're legless, isn't you? Legless, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that when you lose your rag then, then? That's right. What people don't appreciate, you see, about a predicament of your average piss artist <laughs> is you've got no legs, Christ knows where your trolley's got to. <laughs> trolley, yeah, it's not good. funny. Oh, no. <laughs> you couldn't even find your tree, let alone get back into it. <laughs> and as for your shell, well, you've never been more out of it in your life. <laughs> just, just when you need your rag, you find you lost it. <laughs> That's why I drink. <laughs> Fancy another pint? <laughs> Under a tree, by a brook, in a valley where nobody looks. There's a land of plasticine people called Lumpkin Land. <coughs> chuck, chuck, chuck. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Here comes the Lumpkin Land train. Bang on time. <laughs> Who's this riding on his bicycle? It's Mr. Lumpkin Bun, the baker. <laughs> What's wrong with you today, Mr. Lumpkin Bun? Oh, wibble, wobble, wibble, chow a wibbly wobbly whip. <laughs> What's that, Mr. Lumpkin Bun? You're worried about the struggle of the Armenian people for self determination. <laughs> 
And who's this? It's Mr. Lumpkin Chops, the butcher. Oh, holy whip, whip, wobbly whip, wop, whip. No, Mr. Lumpkin Chops. I didn't know that the CIA had openly admitted their manipulative involvement in Central American puppet states. Yeah, just, just a minute. Just hang on a minute. Sorry, can we stop, everybody? I'm sorry, I just need a word with Gaz. Gaz, you're making it a bit heavy, actually. What do you mean? Well, I mean, can't you cut out the political stuff? Just stick to the script. Well, I was just trying to give it a bit of substance. It just seems so... So crass. No, it's nice. It's lovely. Oh, they don't like it. That was nice. It's lovely. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Mr. Lumpkin Bun wants to deliver his buns. Oh, dear. It starts snowing. <laughs> so he has to deliver them by train. What's wrong with that? Have I missed something? Is it allegorical? No, it's not allegorical. It's just showing the kids what a train is, what a baker does. Well, all I'm doing is telling them what's going on in South America and what's happening in Armenia. Well, they don't want to know that sort of thing. Well, it seems a hell of a lot more relevant than the delivering buns in the snow problem. <laughs> I mean, I can just see all those kids at home saying, Oh, God, it's the bun plot again! <laughs> I bet they end up on the lumpkin train singing the ruddy lumpkin song. <laughs> look, Gareth, I know you wanted to get into current affairs, but you're stuck with us. Now, look, the Lumpkins has been a successful children's programme for 15 years now. And another thing, we don't need any of your new characters. Come off it. The kids love my new characters, like Mr. Lumpkin Trotsky, the political activist. <laughs> they don't like him. They do. They love his radical ideology. Gareth, they don't like him. Yeah, well, maybe they don't like him, but, but they just really love Ms. Lumpkin Orgasm, the radical feminist. <laughs> they don't like any of your new characters. It just seems so unfair. Should have got the panorama job. Yeah, well, you were interviewed for both and you got this job. It just seems so unfair that Pamela should get it. I mean, she's such a complete idiot. On panorama tonight, we'll be looking at the bun problem. Why trains go chug chug, woo woo. And how Mr. Postman mends a puncture on his bike. But first, this. Well, yes, I moved up here to Scotland because I heard that there was a shortage of people with my particular skills. And what are they? Uh, well, actually, I'm a Conservative MP. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sir. Uh, hello. Uh, six more flight golf balls, please. More flights? Yes, yes sir. Excuse me. A bloke outside is, sir. Uh, is that him off the telly? Oh, you mean Brucey? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's Brucey, all right, yeah. Is he really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We get them all in here, you know. Brucey, Jimmy, Des, Ted. <laughs> Ted? Ted Rogers. Oh. oh, he's a smashing bloke. He comes in here for golf balls. I say to him, Ted, how many do you want? And you know what he says to me? No, what? He says, three, two, one. <laughs> Really is a cold, yeah. Yeah. That's a lovely anecdote, yeah. Yeah, you know what? Old Brucey, old Brucey, yeah. You know, <laughs> what a scream, what a scream. Oh dear, oh dear, hey, he is, yeah, yeah. What's he like in real life? He's then? just the same. Is he? Yeah, he's just the same every time he comes in here, right? Every time he comes in here, guess what he says? No, no, what? He says, Nice to see you, see you nice. <laughs> So I said, I said, look, steady on, Brucey. I said, steady on, Brucey. You don't get anything for a pair, not with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't have to be mad to work here, but it helps. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah. guess, guess who was in just ten minutes ago? Oh, he had me in stitches. Oh, Nick, 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 Michael Barrymore. <laughs> Michael Barrymore. You what? You what? You what? Now he's funny. Yeah. He's, oh, he's very, very funny. Yeah. But he's not as funny as your Nick Nick. No, Nick no. Nick. Yeah, Nick Nick. What, what is his real name, that bloke? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, for <laughs> walls out here is the stories they could tell. We have some fun in here, mate. Yeah, it sounds hilarious. Especially, especially when Tarby comes in. Ah, no, then. What a natural, oh, eh? Hey, hey? Tarby, he's my favourite. I like Tarby. He's never off stage. No? Never off stage. He tries out all his new material on me. He doesn't. Last week he came in here, he said, he said, have you heard the one about the Irishman's Pakistani's mother-in-law? <laughs> and you know what I said to him? I heard it 15 years ago. <laughs> 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 the old 
ones are the best though, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Have you got those golf balls, please? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, yeah. yeah. There you go. That's um fifty pounds, please. <laughs> fifty pounds for six golf balls. Yeah, yeah, but these are the sort that Jimmy, Brucey, Ted and Des use all the time, then. Oh, better take them then, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Anyway, uh just just exactly fifty pounds. Well, there you go. Lovely. Thanks very much. Thank okay. you. Hey, right, and remember, stay out the black, into the red. You don't get nothing for two in the bed. <laughs> Super. <laughs> <laughs> Can't beat a bit of bullshit. <laughs> so, we come to the end of the series, Ron. Yep. And we've had a great time. Yep. We've really enjoyed ourselves. Yep. You're just agreeing with everything I say. No, I'm not. I've got hiccups. <laughs> so, to all them people who have watched our show and helped us make it, we got a special little message, but we couldn't find the words, so we had to put it into a song. Yup. <laughs> and I meant that one. <laughs> it's the end of the show, and we've got to go. There's only one thing left to do. Not yet, Ron, not yet. <laughs> At the end of the day, there's only one thing to say. <laughs> so to everyone. So to all of you. So to everyone in England, Scotland, Wales. Oh, check this little bag here. <laughs> so Go stuff yourselves. Stick your head in a plastic bag. Oh, why don't you all sort of? And now the dance. people who've helped us on the show, to the camera crew. Sort of. I don't know, one of them was all right, the head cameraman. Not so much of the head. I never did like that lighting bloke, though. He never bought me one drink throughout the old series, so now he's only got one leg. Hmm. Save a fortune on tap dancing lessons, then, won't it? That's for that director. Ha! He ain't gonna have much fun on honeymoon without it. No. <laughs> the producer's dead, isn't he? Hang on. Three, two, one. He is now. <laughs> I'm telling you one last time. I don't do all. What should we do now, Ron? Go home. Sort of. Same thing.